Please, Dr. Emanuel. Yeah. Hello. All right. We can hear you. So, yes. Good afternoon and good morning, everyone. So thank you so much for inviting me to speak uh, in this forum. So I am uh, leading an institution that's uh, responsible for taking care of nearly 9 million people in the northernmost uh, region of Ethiopia, which is called Tigray. So we see hundreds of thousands of uh, patients and thousands of major surgeries and deliveries that happen every year in our hospital. And this was just uh, before the outbreak of the war in November 2020. But we are not only a hospital, we also have a College of Health Sciences and we train thousands of students. We also carry a number of research projects, partnering with uh, lots of institutions, both at home and abroad. So all our activities generate uh, data. So one can ask three important questions. And the first one would be, how is the quality of the data uh, that we generate? and whether we document everything we do and whether it's accurate or not. And the second question is whether we aggregate data, analyze it and interpret it. And the third one would be if we use the data we generate in the very place where it is generated to make uh, decisions, prioritize our actions, and whether we use it to create accountability, transparency and shared vision for the purpose of improving our service to patients, students, and the service we give to our people. So the answer to these uh, questions could lie in the experience we have had over the past couple of decades. Our college is only 19 years old. Our hospital is 14 years old. And over the last uh, uh, decades, we've learned that we miss a lot of data. Uh, we try to document data manually and inaccuracies were common and using data for decision making also had a lot of room for improvement. So we tried to establish a unit uh, consisting of uh, a few staff barely trained in handling health data and we call the unit health management information systems. Uh, there was little improvement, but we noticed that a lot had to be done. So more than a decade ago, we deployed uh, software called SmartCare that was locally made here in Ethiopia. And it's an electronic medical recording software. And we were one of uh, the two hospitals in the entire country, Ethiopia, a country of more than 100 million people. So I'm glad to say that we are the only hospital in the country where the software worked despite uh, the COVID pandemic, the war and the siege in Tigray. And our university also tried to deploy several softwares to improve education process and research. And we also had digital libraries springing up in various campuses in the universities. So from all those technologies that we deployed, we learned the following lessons. The first one was digital technologies really helped us improve patient care and also improve student experience. But we also noticed that the awareness about the importance of data had to be improved and there's still a long way to go. And we're still having complete documentation and hesitancy to use digital technologies. And we also noticed that uh, the data that we generate was not being used by all units in our hospital to improve the very service that they're providing by having a look at their data and making decisions. And most even thought that data was collected for reporting purposes alone and the introduction of the digital technologies from various companies and initiatives within the same hospital, we noticed that the, the same patient goes through the various departments, but we have different softwares and uh, the, the interconnected function became disconnected. And this really posed a, a lot of discomfort among our staff. And our leadership also noticed in the process that data is very important and we still believe it's even more important than uh, our partners in Europe and the US because we have meager resources. We need to know what's happening and we have to use our resources for the right priorities. 
So significant challenges stand before us and we need to address them. So one of the challenges is uh, what I was just describing, the still low level of awareness of the importance of data among staff members and gaps in documentation. The second one is low level of digital literacy among a significant proportion of our staff. The third one is the capacity to analyze data, interpret it and use it for decision making. This is still at its infancy. And those who have the capacity to do that are either teaching in college or doing research or working in NGOs and running their own private businesses. And the hospitals are left with uh, people who are less capable to handle data and make it meaningful. And the, the other challenge we have is the investment that has to be made for ICT infrastructure, which is still very high for us and difficult to afford. And the other challenge is uh, the non-interoperable nature of the various digital technologies that we are bringing to our inst institution. The, the last challenge that I would like to mention is the data we have is not readily available for use or research. Sometimes we even learn that uh, we have a particular data set that our institution has and we did not know, but some group of people carry out research and it gets published and they tell us that data was taken from our institution. So these are very big challenges, but as an institution, we're not sitting down and uh, just waiting for miracles to happen. We are providing solutions. One of the things we did is we opened uh, an undergraduate program in health informatics a few years ago. So we're training uh, young students, uh, new talents. So they are fit to handle data and digital technologies. And the other thing we did is uh, establishing a digital health research and development center. And this very center is the one that's uh, partnering in Bodan, Africa, and also working with Stilberg and Leiden universities in several projects like the DISH project, the book projects, and a number of other projects. So we have uh, talented people, and these people are really showing us that uh, there's a lot we can do in e-learning and also implementing some uh, serious work in bringing about digital transformation. The other thing is strengthening our ICT team. And we're also trying to be a part of uh, clinical trials because uh, we want our patients to benefit from new diagnostics and therapeutic interventions. We were left out of uh, those uh, countless clinical trials being carried out in the world. So we just started having uh, one clinical trial, a multi-center multi-nation project. So we still have a long way to go. We know that. Uh, and we want, you know, everything we do to have uh, at its core um, service to our community and our patients and students. And anything we do, we always think should enhance the safety of our patients. And we don't want to compromise their privacy. And we want it to have reliable security and we don't want their data to be everywhere, so we still to build our capability a lot, and we don't want to discriminate uh, people. So for us all participating in this forum, it's very clear that um, right now the world is becoming interconnected and all the challenges that you are facing, we're also facing them. So we can just find a pandemic sweeping uh, the world within uh, you know a few weeks, and uh, this can happen while no country is quite prepared. It can arise from anywhere. So the issue of building local capacity in our part of the world, we believe uh, is key. So we have to cooperate, share data, and make collective decisions for the safety and health of everyone. And uh, the good thing about us, even though we're lagging behind in a number of things, but we have talents and we have uh, a lot of energy among the youth and uh, the educated. So we just need more opportunities through meaningful partnerships and our institution is ready to engage in uh, lots of partnerships. So at this point, I would like to thank you for giving us the opportunity to be a partner in Vodana and the FAIR initiatives. And we'll also continue to strengthen our efforts. Finally, I would just would like to say that the place where I'm speaking from or the region where I'm speaking from is not a convenient environment. You all might know that war broke out in Tigray in November 2020. 
and um, our patients and staff began to face huge challenges by then, and it, it even became unimaginably difficult after the last uh, weeks of June 2020, when the siege on Tigray began, which is, which is still continuing, and my staff of more than 3,600 have not received their salaries for more than 10 months, me included, and um, they're still working in the hospital and serving patients selflessly with whatever resources are available, and God knows how we keep on living from one day to the next. We beg every organization and NGO we meet for drugs, medical supplies, detergents, linen, food for our patients, quite literally everything. Um, like beggars, we just stand at the doors of uh, the gates of NGOs and UN institutions in our city, begging them for small and big things. And the government of Ethiopia, which is supposed to be our government, as we speak, has shown no interest to help us. And what is worse, it has prevented NGOs and UN institutions who are willing to help us from having unrestricted and sustained delivery of aid to our hospital and the region as a whole. So what I would like to ask you is, as, a, as fellow members of the human race and our partners in this project, I humbly request all of you to put maximum effort to convince your governments, international institutions, and any organization so that they help stop the madness of the Ethiopian government and save our people and our patients. As far as we are concerned, we will work hard, even in projects that might appear are not priorities right now, having a look at the situation where we are in, but uh, we know those projects that we are taking part have future ramifications, because we know that the current darkness cannot last forever, and the day for us to rebuild our region and country will definitely come. Thank you so much for giving me enough time to make my, my points heard. Thank you so much. Of course. Thank you so much, Dr. Emanuel. Um, it would be difficult to put into words anything, uh, an appropriate response, but let uh, just know that we, we heard you and we are sitting with your words and we are so thankful for all of that you've been able to accomplish in spite of all these extreme obstacles. And thank you for being part of Vodan Africa.